Mercy and peace to each of you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, and it's great to see everybody today. If you're visiting with us, we're especially glad you're here. Please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything we can do for you, we would love to. I want to start off by saying thanks to Laura for leading worship last week. I heard she did a great job, and I never worry a minute when I'm gone because I know y'all are in great hands. Appreciate that very much. A couple of announcements as we get started. The session is reminded of our meeting today following worship. And so if you are a visitor and you've been attending for a while and you'd like to become an official member, today would be the day that you meet with the session at the beginning. So see me after church if you have questions about that. I've been asked to remind you about the Pentecost offering. We're a little bit behind since Pentecost was last week. But we're going to collect that offering next week. So I think there was some information put out in the bulletin maybe last week, or maybe it'll be in the bulletin next week, about the Pentecost offering. Um, but it goes to support the youth of the church and also church workers um, that are in need of some help. So let's contribute to that offering next week. Other announcements we need to make today? Yes, please. If you guys have any aluminum cans laying around your house, them. It doesn't necessarily have to be this big. This is just the one that I found in the back closet. But instead of going and buying them, if you guys have them and you want to mind donating them for PDF, we're going to tie dye a t shirt. And so this will catch the excess of the, the dye. And then also, if you have cookie sheets, like the ones that you dry your cookies on, like the rack, the wire rack, that would fit down in one of these. Um, we would use that, wash it, and then we could pick it back up the following Sunday. We won't keep those, but we'll throw the aluminum tins away. So if you have either of those. Okay, plastic paint trays would work too. Yeah. But instead of buying, we thought we'd ask for donations first. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Good. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate that. Not not a lot of good things happen at the dentist, but that's one good thing that can happen at the dentist. Get some toothpaste. Yeah. Others announcements. Yes, please. Uh, I've got two announcements. The first one is we've had a change of date, so if you're interested in serving, it's four thirty one. 
ministry, they will be here, and we just need somebody to come and set up the kitchen and serve lunch and get all that kind of stuff ready. We just need some hospitality people if you're willing to do that. It's on a Saturday. And then also, if you're interested in providing rides to the elderly, think kind of the Meals on Wheels situation, except for you to be driving them from their homes to a doctor's appointment. So if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, just find me and we'll chat about it. That's the gift of gas, which is a big gift for these days. Right? Anybody else? Other announcements? Prayer concerns. We continue to remember Angela Lackey in our prayers today. Deborah Collins is recovering from some surgery that she had. Harriet and David Sawyer both have COVID and are recovering well, but they haven't. We are continuing to pray for Ruth Cantrell's daughter-in-law. Absolutely. Dottie Claybrook is still recovering at NHC, and I had a conversation with her on Friday. She's making good progress, asks for our continued prayers. And then, of course, Molly, Polly's daughter, who has um, her cancer treatments, we're continuing to pray. Others we need to pray for today. You can all pray for my son-in-law's uh, family. Um, your, my son-in-law's father died. Very, very yeah, we sure will, Sarah. Thank you. Others, we have quite a list of prayers. So I keep a list right on my desk, and every day go through it several times. And I would suggest that we all could do that, remember people in our prayers during the day. So if there's nothing else, sounds like we're ready to worship. Let us worship Almighty God together. of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the hearts. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Our opening hymn is number 138.
remain standing and join me as we confess our sin together using the prayer that's printed in your bulletin today. Let us pray. Gracious God, you set within the temple of your grace and mercy. Hear us now as we confess our sin. We still carry our business into the sanctuary. As we enter, our motives are not just to worship your name. We want our needs met rather than Christ's will that causes us. We seek our own satisfaction before we can turn to your ways. As Christ got angry and overturned the tables, keep us from receiving what may be our due. Rather, hear our confession and forgive our sin. Our assurance is this. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Next week, the bulletin will include a coloring page. <laughs> Our hymn of preparation is number 162. Let us stand and sing together.
Would you please be seated? Let's pray for illumination. Oh God, indeed, we look around us and see the beauty of the world, all the many colors that you've given to us as a gift. You've also given us the word as a way to live our lives in abundance and with blessing. So open our hearts and our minds again this morning that we might hear your word and receive it do what it calls us to do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain seated in our responsive reading is Matthew 22nd chapter, verses 35 to 39. Let us read it together. One of them, an expert in the law, asked Jesus a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as scripture lesson today is from the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, verses 1 to 6, 20th chapter, 1 and 2. We're going to start a summer worship series today. The narrative lectionary, of course, we've read through during the fall and winter and spring, but in the summertime, the narrative lectionary allows us to do some series stuff. So we're going to do a four-week series on the Ten Commandments beginning today. It gives us an opportunity to dig in a little deeper on a particular topic. So as I read from Exodus, listen for God's word for you this day. At the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone out of the land of Egypt, on that very day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So 
So there was a group of friends who went to a restaurant after church on Sunday. Now, I know none of you would ever do that. But after examining the paltry tips left by the church group, the waitress was not pleased. Looking toward the table, she grumbled, You people come in here with the Ten Commandments in one hand and a $10 bill in the other. I'm not sure how you're doing with the commandments, but you sure are great at not breaking that ten. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the land and the sky, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, and God said that it was very good. Man was created in the image of God, blessed by God in order to be a blessing to others. From the beginning, this has been the vocation of humans. Be blessed so that you might be a blessing. One of the blessings we enjoy as the people of God is that we belong to God. He promises to fight against anything and everything that would oppress us, control us, or kill us. The overall message of the book of Exodus is that God intervened in the life of the Hebrews in Egypt to deliver them from slavery. Today we get the next part of that story with God and God's people. Over the course of the next four weeks, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the giving of the law, specifically as it exists in the Ten Commandments. What did God intend with the giving of the commandments? As Christians, are we still obligated to follow them? Are they just the Ten Suggestions or the Ten Commandments? What I love about our reading today is that the Ten Commandments, as they're known are not only for us as Christians, but for also for the Jewish faith as well. They're, they connect all of us to the blessings of God. So Moses goes up to the mountain where he hears from God. Take this message down to my people, says God to Moses. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I fought for you. On eagles' wings, I brought you to myself. What a beautiful image. In fact, there's only two times in the original Hebrew scripture where such imagery is used on eagle's wings, this one, and then the prophet Isaiah picks it up in Isaiah chapter 40, proclaims that the people of God will rise up on eagle's wings. We have a hymn that goes along those, that, those lyrics. We should not miss the point that God proclaims that the people are brought not just to any place, but they are brought to be with God. Even though they wander the wilderness for years and years, they have home, no homeland during all that time, God says that the people are brought into God's presence on eagles' wings. And then God says, if you obey my voice, and if you, my covenant, then you will be my treasured possession of all the people. God says you are going to be a blessing as the priestly kingdom, a holy nation. Now, that's not language we use every day, priestly kingdom, so let's look at that a little closer. What does a priest do? A priest is a mediator between a person and God. A priest enables communication between someone and God. And that's the way that we're called to be a holy nation, to interpret who God is, what God's about, to the world around us, so that others might know God, our community. Notice the way that God presents the commandments. If we obey God's voice and keeps God's covenant, and then Moses delivers the commandments. You've heard them before. It starts with the shalls, the things we shall do. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall make for yourself, not make for yourself an idol. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. You shall remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. That's the first five. And then we get to the shall nots. Number six, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's house or your neighbor's wife. But these Ten Commandments have been part of the Judeo-Christian faith since the beginning, as Bob Marley would say, from ever since. For thousands of years we've identified the Ten Commandments with faith and life. 
We learn them as children. We, we post them in our homes sometimes or even in public places so that others might see them. We're going to spend a lot more time in the weeks to come with the actual commandments. But for, day, for today, I just I kind of wanted us to consider the commandments as a whole first. What place do they have in our faith today? It's a question that Christians are often asked. Some might say they're mere decoration for us. This is the Old Testament after all. Surely the law is no longer binding for us as Christians, right? Jesus is the new covenant. That was the old, and this is the new. Except for that pesky little phrase from Matthew 5, 17. Jesus came not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. So it seems we're not quite off the hook with the commandments. So most of us, I think, would agree that the Ten Commandments are still part of our faith and our lives in a profound and meaningful way. The question is, how are the commandments connected to grace? What happens if we fail to follow them? <coughs> Jesus said that we can never be separated from God. Well, what if, we, what if we stumble over these commandments? The great reformer Martin Luther was the first to formally try and deal with the idea of law and grace. His writing was picked up and published later in what was known for Lutherans as the Book of Concord. And in that book, three reasons for the Ten Commandments' importance to Christians were published. Later, our own John Calvin further developed these uses of the law and included them in his Institutes of the Christian Religion. In fact, it could be said that Calvin maybe is most known for his third use of the law, the Ten Commandments. So how does it work? The first use of the law is that the law demonstrates the righteousness of God. The law and the commandments are for believers and not believers in order to know what is good. The second is that for Christians, the law condemns us, showing us how far we fall short of what God would intend for us. <coughs> Piety, in other words. And finally, the third use of the law is the didactic use for teaching us what is useful, what is good, what is the life that God intends for us, how are we supposed to live. Now all that's very theological, all that's very technical. I think most of us understand that the goodness of God is found in the giving of the commandments. We all remember Charlton Heston bringing the tablets down right in the movie and all giving them to the people in the movie. <clears throat> but I think even most of us recognize our sinfulness in comparison. We all know how far, how far we fall short of the commandments. We also recognize the second one, that our salvation comes through Jesus. But the third use of the law, to me, is the most useful. I think it's the most important thing for us to remember. John Redhead once wrote, A thing is not wrong because God forbids it. God forbids it because it's wrong. It's an age-old philosophical debate. Thomas Aquinas said, Is something good because God says it? Or does God say it because it's good? It's the same thing, just from different sides. Aquinas even argued that not even God himself could change the Ten Commandments because they represent what is ultimately good in the world. This is how human beings live in relationship with each other. Not only with God, but with one another. That's how the ancient reflection of goodness it's found all the way back at the beginning, all the way back in the creation. It comes through the Ten Commandments. Sorry, I got a tickle in my throat this morning. <coughs> That's how all this is connected. All the way back to creation. The rescue of the Hebrew people, the renewal of creation in the commandments, all the way up through Jesus. Some of the commandments are pretty obvious. Obviously, to kill another human being is clearly to violate God's image of creation. To take another life, what God intends. Some of the others are not so clear, but I would argue maybe it's similar. For example, to keep the Sabbath holy is to honor the work that God did in creation. It's also just as much a system that honors the work that we do and celebrates the goodness that human work can create. 
But if we don't honor the Sabbath, if we don't honor God, perhaps we make it harder for others to keep the Sabbath. In our competitive world, sometimes people take advantage of the time on Sunday to get ahead of others. Again, violating the image of God in another. And some of you might think that that's a little hypocritical coming from me since I work on Sunday. But I don't preach what I do well. I preach what is the gospel. <laughs> Keeping the law found in the commandments is the ultimate teaching about what is good in creation. The relationship that we have with God and with one another. The truth of today's lesson is all about the if clause. God says, if you obey my voice, and if you keep my commandments, then you can be a priestly nation. Then you can be that holy nation that I need you to be. We have a job to do. It continues to be the very same job that we've always had in God's economy. And the Ten Commandments is just one of the tools that we're asked to use. We're to act as a priestly nation, to mediate, to interpret the world, to interpret God to the world. How will others know the character and the love of God if we don't demonstrate it for them and help them understand what it looks like? The truth is, our world and our culture still don't have this message down as well as could be. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets so that more and more of the message would be clear. The law is, is not just a rule book to be followed or else, but instead it's a it's a glorious stained glass window to the ancient Garden of Eden. It's about the goodness of creation, the, the relationships that we're created for in glimpses. We see the, the call, the job that we're called to do by God to be stewards of that creation so that we can care for the world in the way God wants it. Now maybe some of you still aren't convinced. Maybe the commandments is still hard to imagine as something more than than rules or condemnation is still the straight edge of the Bible, right? So instead of imagining it that way, imagine it this way. A world in which God reigns and all the world knows the character and grace of God. A world in which nothing is more important than God. No person uses the name of God or any other religion for their own purpose or for violence or hatred. A world in which human beings are co-creators with God. Enjoy the goodness of work and rest, and enjoy the blessings that God alone provides. A world in which we honor our parents, and all parents are honorable, where children are valued and cherished. A world of no harm, where no blood is spilled and violence and all wars cease, where relationships are honored, sacred vows are taken. A world where everyone has enough, and nobody takes from another. A world of truth and a world of justice. Believe it or not, this is the world of the Ten Commandments. And our calling is to enjoy its many blessings so that we can bless others with what we know. We'll go through the rest of the commandments as we go through our series in the weeks to come. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God. Would you join me in prayer? Let us pray together. Blessed Trinity, in whom we know the maker of all things, seen and unseen, the Savior of all, both near and far. By your Spirit, we pray that you would enable us to worship 
your divine majesty, that with all the company of heaven we might magnify your glorious name as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Through your word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. God, you reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. So we pray this morning that you would fill us with the visions of your glory, that we might always serve you and praise you. The world around us needs to know the power and the mercy of God, the way to live life in abundance, with peace. We pray for this, our church, and for all our churches that are charged with proclaiming this word. We pray this morning for pastors and for elders, and for every member sitting in a pew this morning in search of blessings and new life. We pray for the sick, those recovering from surgery. There are those among us that are filled with anxiety about those they love. Calm our fears, O God of peace, and grant us the knowledge that we are never alone. Send us O oh, Jesus, to one another with words of hope and prayer and compassion. We pray for the poor and the broken in our community, for resources, for love, for plans that will enable transformation and change. We pray that every part of your creation would be sustained and renewed into the fullness of what you intend all along. Most of all, we are grateful, most grateful, for the salvation that we not only enjoy, but we depend on in Jesus Christ. That salvation is for us and for those we love, but also for others and for the world. For we believe that you so loved the world that you sent Jesus. And so we pray in the name of Jesus, and we use the words that he taught us to pray together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to worship now with the bringing forth of our tithes and our offerings. <clears throat>
we know we are blessed so that we might be a blessing to others. And so we receive, we return a portion of the blessings that you've given us and ask that you bless these gifts, send them out into the world, so that others might know your love and your grace and your mercy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Remain standing and let us affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 139.